Hello fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 1st, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. Mercury is on the move, bringing new perspectives, shifts of energy that I think a lot of us are going to welcome. And it is also Venus as well, reaching an important moment of frustration and then reality and transcendence in order to move forward and move into her home sign where she's able to bring forward her very sensual best. So there's so much to talk about here. I'm going to start with Mercury and there are a few reasons for that. One of the reasons is because of the big and beautiful things that Mercury is doing right around Wednesday, leaving the energy of Pisces and then essentially stationary pretty much for the next 10 days, even though technically going direct next week while in the sign of Aquarius. And we'll also connect in harmony right around Thursday, a beautiful harmonious connection with Venus that brings love and the perception of love into the mix. Now, I actually wanna talk about this in a few different ways, not only because of what's coming, but what has been happening. So I've been getting a lot of emails and people asking about uh, COVID-19, which is also known as the coronavirus, and asking about the astrology of it. And so first off, I do want to say, Mercury has been retrograde in Pisces. And what that says to me is a lack of clarity. And that also speaks to a lot of this sense of mystery that I've been feeling, like whether we're getting the right information or not. Um, and also a lot of imagination. That is part of what Piscean energy represents. Remember, and as I've spoken about over the last few weeks, Mercury doesn't really like being in the sign of Pisces as much, isn't able to bring forward uh, its higher qualities of being more uh, analytical or more focused on how to communicate and understanding nuances of communication. It is a very uh, fanciful and imaginative and even sometimes I would say kind of hyperbolic kind of energy. And so it's great for weaving a story. It's great for um, making things sound uh, profound and interconnected and talking about things like viruses, for example, right? And that sense of how they move through the world. Well, it is now with Mercury in the sign of Pisces that that would be of special interest, but we're also being very revealing as well as to other more unconscious uh, motivations that could be there. The Freudian slip, if you will. But the Freudian slip involves, at its best, awareness, right? It involves us saying to ourselves, okay, why did I say what I said? What could that mean about what I really believe? And what is that really connected to? That is an act of self-awareness that we have to be committed to in order to actually engage in that process. Because actually, I think that a lot of us, if not all of us, we go around having Freudian slips, revealing who we are, and maybe not necessarily being conscious of the layers of meaning that could be there. It takes an intentional act of um, being willing to contemplate that can lead to that deepening understanding that ultimately leads us to decide if we like whom it is that we are communicating ourselves to be and to change more authentically from the inside out. And so we have that one part of it happening. And so I do think this week, in the middle of the week with Mercury changing signs, moving into the sign of Aquarius, this is actually going to be um, a much better energy to get reliable, to get scientific, to get communication that is more detached from fear and more detached from just what is possible and what actually is. Remember, Aquarius is a very scientific sign and I think that we're gonna talk a lot about Aquarian energy, not only now, but in the weeks ahead and be on the lookout. As I said in the monthly horoscopes, I'll be doing Saturn moving into Aquarius special horoscopes, uh, finishing up those now for superstars and the YouTube video as well. All of that is coming in the coming days. I hope that that's done this week, if not uh, the following week. But when it is that that does come out and this Aquarian energy is something we'll be talking about again and again, 
as much as it is about groups and being connected and interconnected, it is not the type of communion and more profound uh, interconnections of the web that we share, the way in which we live uh, in a very communal way, even if we are very separate from each other. It has an element to it that is about groups, that is about community, but it is also a highly uh, detached sign and a highly individualistic sign as well. And so I do think that that healthy detachment is actually needed with all the fear. I mean, if I'm getting so many messages asking for my astrological insights onto this, it does mean that there's a lot of fear that may be motivating this. And so that is going to come as a relief, I think, to a lot of people. The other thing is, I think that a lot of people are saying that this is connected to Saturn and Pluto, and it may be. But when I think of viruses, I often think of Jupiter and I think of Neptune. And the reason is because these two planets are ruling planets of Pisces, and they speak to that sense of um, dissolution, if you will, right? Like that sense of things dissolving into the larger whole to the point where they become a part of the larger whole. And then if you think about it, the sign of Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. And so the fact that what we know so far is that this is something that is affecting the elderly um, in more um, consequential ways, in more harmful ways, it is the elderly people who are more vulnerable to this. And one of the sort of surprises and the unknowns right now is why is it that it isn't affecting children as you might expect, because they also have sort of compromised immunities. So there are all these factors that are unknown at this point, but when I look at the astrology of it, sure, we can connect it to Saturn and Pluto, I've been talking a lot about Saturn and Pluto. I know that in the 2019 year ahead I did, in the 2020 year ahead video I did as well. We are in powerful and changing times. And this year is an accelerated year, if you will. Not only are Saturn and Pluto connecting as they had earlier this year in January, they connected in the sky. So if you remember, I spoke about in the 2019 and 2020 videos about how the last time Saturn and Pluto got together, it represented the Protestant Reformation, which changed truly the way that we understand what it means to be human and our relationship with the divine, our relationship to each other, to the earth. It was this whole philosophy that arose from there as a process moving forward and years forward of manifest destiny and how that changed the whole world and the relationships that we have with other cultures and other people. And so I think that, and I do believe that, we are at the very beginning of a journey like this where who has the power and what it means to be at the forefront of culture and of thought um, and yes of who owns the most powerful forces in the world and what those are are being redefined in powerful and very important ways and so it's an exciting time to be alive certainly i do think that part of what um, is being evoked in the sky now is more likely connected to Jupiter connecting with Pluto. Uh, that particular conjunction, and you think about with Jupiter as ancient ruler of Pisces, reaching out there uh, and having a sense of being able to merge with many others. And right now, Jupiter is in the sign of Capricorn. And in Capricorn, Jupiter is less likely to feel like it is able to bring forward its more expansive and more hopeful qualities. Meeting Pluto, that becomes that much more accelerated, that much more profound. It is as if adding a whole lot of intensity to that Jupiterian energy. And that may very well be part of what is, in a larger sense, helping us to understand power more deeply. Given that, we are actually on the precipice of more and more powerfully moving into the energy of Aquarius. And the last time that Saturn and Pluto connected in Capricorn, they didn't go on, Saturn didn't go on and right away connect with Jupiter 
and Saturn conjunct at the end of the same year. That didn't happen 500 years ago. So the fact that that conjunction is taking place, that to me further accelerates the fact that whatever that next chapter is for humanity, it is the Aquarian energy that is going to uh, be an important part of the definition. And so there is that sort of healthy sense of detachment that we could be cultivating right now. I do think that's valuable. But coming back to Pluto, remember with Pluto, Pluto reveals sort of the underbelly, what is the you know so-called dark side. And one example that I like to use when I think about Pluto is you think about Pluto in Scorpio, and that's a very dramatic example that we can take. When Pluto was moving through the sign of Scorpio, um, there were a few things that happened collectively for us. One of the things, of course, was Scorpio having to do with intimacy and profound sharing, including physical sharing. It um, was one of the indicators that spoke to the AIDS virus, the HIV virus. Now, here's the thing, and, and one thing that I have long believed. If we're looking at the dark side of something, right? It wasn't the virus. It wasn't the fact that people were getting sick. I don't feel like that was the true underbelly of the energy of Scorpio energy, but rather it was the way in which people um, compartmentalized and made people, an entire community, made them taboo, right? Again, very Scorpion as a way to separate themselves, you know, cast them into the, like the literal shadows, didn't want to acknowledge the shadow within them, that we are all vulnerable, right? And if something's happening to one of us, it is happening in many ways to all of us. And there wasn't that level of compassion and integration and a willingness to see the other as themselves, but rather uh, to cast people out. That to me was what, Pluto truly did. That was the dark. That was the underbelly. It was what we saw in people and how they treated those who were sickest among us. And it isn't the first time we've seen this. You know, something comes up, people get sick, some people get scared, and they try to find ways to other other people. We saw this very powerfully with Pluto moving through Sagittarius, right? Pluto and Sagittarius, there was this very strong us versus them, the foreigner, the other, um, based on things like religion and race and culture. So we saw this come up in very potent and very powerful ways. And what we saw sort of collectively was the othering of people rather than the embrace of, okay, there's, this person is a reflection of me. That's very hard to do when you're scared. And I can understand the fear. Pluto can be scary because Pluto represents cruelty. It represents uh, what Freud called the cruelty of fate. The fact that there are factors there that we don't have power over, that we don't have control over, that can just show up for us. And then what? What are we gonna do? Because part of life is living in the surrender of knowing that there are things we don't control. And that is a decision, that is a choice, and it, it requires faith. So right now, what I'm seeing, and I, um, I just wanna say, because I'm from Toronto, I'm a Toronto girl born and raised, and even though I haven't lived there in many years, I do keep up on what's happening in Toronto, and one thing that has been really disturbing to me um, has been the racism that our Chinese community has been experiencing. And uh, it is, to me, that is such a projection of the shadow. That's where Pluto is coming forward here. Because it is speaking to um, how it is that certain tropes are being um, sort of trotted out with out even an awareness that that is what is taking place. There's the othering that is happening under this energy. And it's not fair and it's not right. Um, you know, I'll just say that I don't know how, if you're eating one thing, but you're drinking milk or you're eating cows or whatever, how is that any different? It isn't even about what is being eaten. It is about um, certain conditions that took place in certain places. This is what we know so far, and that could happen anywhere. And so again, I understand that people are scared and I'm not vegan, right? So I'm saying this, I don't have an agenda or anything like that. 
But I think it is important to not forget our values of love and wisdom. And love requires being willing to see through the eyes of another. Love requires being willing to put fear aside so that you can learn more deeply about yourself. And we learn about ourselves through others. We are essentially social creatures. That is our very nature, is to be social. I know dogs are not human, but ask me about that, having a dog now. And my, my guy, my biggie, is a big dog. He is 110 pounds. Um, and of what I say, he's 110 pounds of muscle and, and treats. <laughs> That's him. And I see how when we go to the park, he wants to interact with other dogs. He wants to play. And he doesn't care if he's meeting a miniature chihuahua or something, right? He wants to get in there. He wants to enjoy. He wants to play. And it is, uh, you know, something that he doesn't necessarily understand that no, you don't realize how big you are. <laughs> you have to be careful of the, the little chihuahua needs to be careful with you. And the little chihuahua is going to be scared of you. And that's okay. Cause I can see that look of disappointment in his eyes when the chihuahuas start barking. And so there's fear, but there's also that natural inclination to connect with others. So we see it in other species and we certainly can see it within ourselves as well. And so I wanted to mention all of this because this is something that actually came up that I spoke of when I did my talk on, um, on, the, on the cruise that I was a part of recently at the beginning of January under the light of the Saturn uh, Pluto conjunction. Now that talk was recorded. If you're a superstar, you can hear that talk. Um, it is the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. And again, if you're a superstar, you can access it under replay live events in the superstar navigation page. And so it was during that talk that I spoke about how a lot of fear is going to come up not only with the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto, but all the other things that are happening this year, but it is ultimately part of launching us in new directions and new understandings of our own power. And so what are we going to do? Are we going to give in to the fear and let us let it carry us wherever it wants to go, right? Mercury is the media. And so right now we've got Mercury moving through Pisces and so yes, there's fear and the media is a part of that, of amplifying that voice. And I do think that the media is ultimately a reflection of us. I don't think that the media is good or bad. I think that they reflect us and where we are and what we respond to. That is ultimately uh, this reflection. It is what we respond to that it responds to and so on and so on. And so it is up to us to consciously choose to respond to the call to be more wise and more loving. But more than that, with a sky like this, with Mercury moving into Aquarius, right? Bringing it back to the astrology of right now. And again, with the powerful astrology of this year, we are gonna see what it means to have a heightened Aquarian energy, not only at the end of this year, but think about this, at the very end of this month, Mars will meet Saturn in the sky. That is going to be one of the more powerful indications of what Pluto moving into Aquarius is going to be for us in our own individual journeys, but collectively as well, that is going to give us powerful insight. And so we are already on that precipice and Mercury now is going to help us with that of healthy detachment and more than that of decision of deciding who it is that we are going to be as we relate to others as equals. And I think that's going to show up in terms of our collective conversations, in terms of the media, but more personally as well. This may not be the time for like, you know, huge consequential decisions because of the heightened fear. Good decisions aren't made necessarily when there's fear. But when it is that we are able to look at things, you know, it is said that rationality is a gift. And I think about how recently, uh, last week, we had the study group, an amazing study group. It meant so much to me for prayers to the sky. And so that's the first of an ongoing uh, monthly study group that we're going to have throughout the year. And we started it on the sun, right? Because that's the first major planetary chapter in the book. So we started by looking at the sun. And it was in Apollo that we saw 
that this was a, an ancient Greek god that represented rationality and prophecy. Just like the Aquarian energy represented rationality and prophecy both simultaneously, you can hold them both. And so the rationality is the healthy detachment. The prophecy is the integration of science and art. And that is part of why a lot of people consider astrology part of uh, the Aquarian energy. Although I think it depends how you approach your astrology. Astrology is neutral. The sky just is. Um, you can't have astrology without the astrologer. You bring yourself to the sky. So if that's how you see what you do, that integration of science and art, then that's going to show up in your astrology. For some people, their astrology is a much more uh, Piscean endeavor, right? A much more inspired endeavor. For others, it's more Gemini or more Mercurial. It's more about uh, the techniques and the process, the mythology and the me methodology rather. That gets you there. The mythology that's uh, that touches on a few different parts of the sky, but yeah, it could touch on the Gemini energy as well. And so it really depends how you approach it. But I do think that we're going to start to see things differently starting this week, and perhaps dramatically differently once we get into next week. And so what I just want to say is decide who you're going to be. It is that simple. Decide that you are going to be a person who is rooted in love and wisdom. And from that place, everything will look different. Not only now, but if you continue to commit to that as a daily practice, we're never going to be perfect. Once we're perfect, we, you know, we, we go on, we transcend like the Buddha. We go on to whatever's next as part of our soul's evolution. But if you're here, you're still learning. And if you're here, I believe you're learning to choose love and wisdom constantly and in different ways again and again and again. And this is a great opportunity to do just that, to choose love, to choose wisdom and to be a force of that for other people. It is a decision after all. We have free will after all. There is a phrase that comes from Shakespeare, I believe, and it says, the wise man rules his stars, the fools obey them. The wise man rules his stars. And this actually reminds me of Plato, something I spoke about in my book, The Body and the Cosmos. It was Plato who said, we contemplate the sky to cultivate wisdom. That is the point of it. That is why we do what we do. And, you know, we think about these people who are at the foundation of Western thought as we know it today, Western philosophy as we know it today. These were deeply spiritual deeply mystical people and yes they contemplated the sky and they knew why they were doing it they understood this as a, a higher endeavor they talked about the nature of creation of the universe and of the nature of source right that we now call god these were important considerations to these people and so we find ourselves here today and we find ourselves with a choice we find ourselves with an option which is Ultimately, are we going to look at the sky to cultivate wisdom or are we going to look at the sky to cultivate fear, which is a much, much lower state of spirit to be in? And so I wanted to share that, especially in the context of this week with Mercury leaving Pisces. Let that be the invitation to you now to cultivate that more detached and healthy perspective and to find your way forward. And that is also a way of love. And I think that's going to be part of what shows up for us now as well. It is going to be right around Thursday that Mercury will speak in harmony with Venus. And this to me is a beautiful and encouraging energy. This to me says, see with eyes of love, think with love. Consider how it is that we are choosing to further love through our thought, through our words, through what we give attention to. And where is it that we have been getting in our own way? Because right now it feels that way, like we're getting a little bit in our own way. And another part of the reason for that is because we do have Venus making some interesting, continuing to make challenging connections with other power players. If you remember last week, I spoke about Venus speaking with Pluto 
and how it is that that could show up for us. Venus speaking with Pluto and all the power dynamics and all the intensity of emotion that could be there. It is going to be this week, right around Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are on the planet, that a connection with Venus to Saturn is going to perfect. Now that could be restraint. That could be a real reality check that helps us, that puts us in a right perspective, but not so much perspective, but in the right place of heart, in a right place of emotion. Venus, after all, is moving through the sign of Aries right about now. That is a sign of adrenaline and response. Well, it is Saturn that helps to ground us in reality, that invites us to check our own responses. And so I do think that's gonna be part of how this energy shows up for us now. More personally, yes, all of us in at least one area of life may be having a reality check. Where have we been overindulgent? Including in our thoughts, including in our fears, but in other behaviors as well, where have we been overindulgent? And where is it that we need to get more honest with ourselves as to what we're gonna sacrifice? And sometimes to really have faith, we have to sacrifice our fears. In sacrificing our fears, we find ourselves, we find our most authentic self. And that's gonna be part of the invitation now. Now, I would also add, as we navigate later into the week, it is going to be on Thursday that, or right around Friday for some, well, Venus is gonna change signs, finally leaving the sign of Aries. And as Venus changes signs, is able to bring forward its very best qualities. It's qualities of sensuality and connection, wanting to be connected to other people, wanting to touch, wanting to taste. This is gonna bring us back into our actual bodies, right? Right now we're being told to be so separate and in a very individualistic sign, Venus can be happy doing that, but that isn't Venus's essential nature. Venus's essential nature is connection. And it is going to be Venus moving into Taurus that not only brings a more grounded perspective to connection, to love, to sensuality, to understanding joy, but also encourages us to be with our senses as well. Encourages us to connect in real spaces and in real time to others. With all this energy starting to move into Aquarius in an accelerated way before the month is even over, this sense of choosing separation, choosing isolation, choosing detachment, physical detachment as well. We are now more connected than ever because of the internet. The internet is a great um, metaphor for Aquarian energy. We're more connected than ever, but it's all happening on levels of air and of mind and of communication. Physically, we're more disembodied than ever. We feel more separate than ever. And I actually think that's part of why astrology as a force in the world has become more popular, become more relevant, because we are aching for connection and for meaningful interconnections with other people. And it is astrology that reanimates the sky. It connects us to our external environment. Now, this is an exploration of astrology as returning us to a place of embodiment. Uh, well, this has been done quite poetically, quite extensively by one of my dear former professors, Patrick Curry. And so I would encourage you to read anything by him and especially his work in astrology uh, and exploring it philosophically and academically because he really dives into how significant it is the part of us that brings us to astrology is ultimately looking for uh, interconnection in a more alienated world, that it is um, the iron cage of postmodernism, as Max Weber called it, and how soul draining that is, how unlike our very essential nature it is to be as separated as we are, to be increasingly more and more separated, that we are aching for connection. And it is astrology that helps us to feel that connection. And again, that is something that Patrick Curry has explored and is truly the world expert at. So I would encourage you to, to read something that he's written. I am um, forever grateful to him for helping me with that, with that understanding and that deepening of understanding. What I love about this week for us there's a lot here, right? I love Venus moving into Taurus. I think that is power 
that is us coming back into the wisdom that cannot necessarily be found on just levels of thought and mind, but on deeper levels of body and wisdom. Our bodies hold a tremendous amount of wisdom. And again, I know it might sound a little bit like shameless plugs. I'm talking about these different books that I've written, The Body and the Cosmos. It talks about this as well. <laughs> it talks about how, according to Plato, every part of our physical self, every organ, is intimately connected to some spiritual principle, some higher wisdom, that we aren't just physical beings, but every minutia of us connects to not only the stars, not only the sky, but also connects to eternal principles of spiritual growth, of contemplating wisdom. As much as we can look to the sky to contemplate wisdom, we can look to our own bodies as well as a reflection of the cosmos. We are a universe traveling within a multiverse, within a larger universe. And every step along the way, there is that deep interconnection to it. And so how would you want to be treated, right? To someone that you have an intimate connection to, even the stranger you have an intimate connection to. And so I would invite you, connect with principles of love and wisdom, make that choice. Mercury moving into Aquarius can help us to make that choice. Even when the fear is strong and it can be very strong and I want to acknowledge that and understand that and give even the fear part of me and the fear part of us to give it love. But don't forget who we are, right? And it is Venus moving into Taurus that I think is going to remind us we are incarnated for a reason and our journey through life and our journey through Earth is not meant to be lived isolated, is not meant to be alienated. It is truly against our most essential self to isolate ourselves. Even within monasteries, there is community. Even in spaces where places or places that people do go to isolate and separate themselves, there is still interconnection. There are others waiting there for us. And so right now we have a choice, right? That is uh, one of the wonderful things about being a human being. We always get to choose. Is it our pain that is ultimately at the root of all fear? Is that going to be the thing that defines who we are? And we are defined by what we do. That's what Saturn teaches us, right? Faith without works is dead. It is whom it is that you demonstrate yourself to be that you are. That is one way of understanding who we are, and that is Saturn's way of understanding who we are. And so how is it that we are going to demonstrate those higher principles, our essential nature of love and wisdom? That is part of the great invitation now, the great opportunity now, but I would say that is also where the bigger blessings can be found now as well. Thanks to Venus moving into Taurus, we will be reminded that there is joy in being present. There is joy in the sensual experience of being a human being. And that can only happen in the presence of another. That can only happen when we allow others to be there and for us to be there with them in whatever way that love calls us to be. Well, that can be a place of, of tremendous, true spiritual love. And it is a love that lifts us all. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, all of it. It means so much. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful energy this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have two huge announcements this week. Another book, yes, another book, and an Equinox Synchronicity University event. So there's lots to talk about here. Let's start with Synchronicity University. It is going to be on March 21st that I am going to hold my very first Equinox event. And we are going to have a celebration of Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius. Now, depending where you are on the planet, that is taking place right around the 21st or 22nd 
Um, but all of us are going to be feeling this shift coming on uh, and the classes will go right to just hours before the official shift takes place. So we're going to have a party uh, and we're going to celebrate the fact that it is Saturn now moving forward and all that that's going to mean for us. Uh, and we'll be celebrating that together as part of the Synchronicity University Equinox event. As before, you do get huge discounts if you register early as low as $5 a class and you choose your own tuition rate, which is very powerful. So I'll have two classes on that day of March 21st. It'll be a full day. We'll be hanging out online. The first class I teach after we have our opening party is going to be Saturn in aspect to planets and chart points. Now, you may know this, but I actually have a series on YouTube of Saturn through the signs and houses. So that's a free series of classes of Synchronicity University that I've posted on my channel years ago, actually. And so this is going to build on that information that is already available to you uh, here on YouTube. And we will actually go through what it means as Saturn is aspecting different planets and chart points in your sign natally or by transit, which can be very valuable to take into consideration as Saturn moves into a brand new sign uh, the same day, actually, as our, as our particular party. And then afterwards, later in the day, I will have, by special request, Chiron through the signs and houses. So we are going to explore what it means. Your Chiron in the chart, we're going to look at the mythology and we're going to go through each sign and house to help you to understand how Chiron and how you connect to Chiron in your own chart. So of course, with all my classes, I hope you absolutely love them. And it means so much to me that so many of you resonate with what I share. If you've never taken a class before with me, uh, this is a good chance to actually look into it. Two classes uh, for, I think, about the cheapest rate you're going to get with an astrologer. And so you'll get to actually see what it's like, how I teach online. If you've taken classes before, you know uh, that this super low price that I offer tends to be just at the very beginning. And so it is only until March 4th that we are going to have uh, the choose your own tuition rate. So if you would like to join us, please do sign up now. Uh, by the time we get to the middle of the week, it'll go back to the regular price of $35 a class. Uh, but yes, choose your own tuition rate, pay what it is that you'd like to pay, and join us online. Once you do pay, you get links, you'll get on the email list, which sends you reminders to let you know that your class is coming up, uh, and we'll be celebrating together. And I'm really looking forward to it. Synchronicity University, the Equinox event, celebrating Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius and so much more coming up March 21st. My next big announcement is my next book. <laughs> yes, there's another one. Book number four, The Universe is Wise and Loving, Volume One, The Nodes of the Moon. It is coming out. It is coming out this year. This has been a labor of love, uh, but now is the time to release it. It's been about 90% done uh, for a couple of years, then I left it alone. But now it really has been uh, just there have been a lot of powerful reminders that this is the time to share my perspective on how it is the nodes align us with greater love and greater wisdom. And so in this book, you get a first section all about this philosophical exploration. Then we explore the nodes. Then we go through the signs and houses. Then we go through uh, an aspect, the nodes and aspect to planets and chart points. So there's a lot covered here in this book. And as always, I hope you absolutely love it. The great thing is, is that if you order an advanced copy, not only do you get a bunch of free gifts, but you also get it well in advance of publication. So the official publication on Amazon is going to be August 22nd. The uh, advanced copies will be shipped out in the middle of May. So you'll get it well in advance, about three months in advance of anybody else. And it comes with a bunch of free gifts. So one of uh, the major things is you get a hard copy of the book signed by me. The other free gift you get is the Spiritual Astrology Synchronicity University package. It's valued at $175. When you make your purchase, you get the automatic download right away to get this package of classes that I've taught that all relate to understanding 
your astrological chart from a more spiritual perspective. Now, the third gift is going to be access to a class that I'm going to teach on June 14. This class will be on the changing of the nodes. So the nodes this spring are going to move from the Cancer Capricorn axis where they've been and into the Gemini Sagittarian axis. And this is going to play out for the coming year and a half. Well, what does that mean for you and your sign? What does that mean for the collective? That's what we're gonna talk about in this class. It was the great 11th century astrologer, Al Biruni, who said that the nodes are exalted in this placement. And so how does that play out for you? That's what we're gonna explore over the course of this class that I will be teaching. And then the fourth gift, fourth book means four gifts. You will get um, a design that I'm working on right now, which is a brand new design of a magnet that I like to give when I'm at live events. If you've ever been to one of my live events, you know I like to give little gift bags and it normally will include a magnet, a fridge magnet, and it is a slim business card size magnet. And it will say the universe is wise and loving. It'll have the name of my website really small as well, but it'll mainly be that big logo, the universe is wise and loving. And it is a brand new design. So the person who designs my book covers, um, Yavez, he is the same person who's also designing uh, this uh, brand new business card logo for me. So you'll be one of the very, very first people to get it. And so I hope you absolutely love it. I hope you love your free gifts. Now, right now, and only over the course of this weekend, so this video is being published on Sunday, which means it's the last day. Um, this was announced earlier this week, this book launch, and it is until the end of this weekend, as we start this week, that there is a $5 flat shipping rate. No matter where you are in the world, shipping is only $5. And so you get to save a little bit of money or a lot of money, depending on where you are, and you get all these wonderful free gifts. Um, where it comes to the class for uh, that I'll be teaching in June, you'll actually get uh, the link right away. When you make your purchase, you will get the link to know that's where you gotta be on June 14 to join me online. And so in many ways, you get gifts right away just for making your purchase. And then you get gifts again when you get the advanced copy. And if you want to wait, if you want the ebook or something, or you just want to wait, you can do that as well. It will be August 22nd that The Universe is Wise and Loving Volume 1 will be available wherever books are sold. Thank you. Thank you for your trust, for your enthusiasm. I hope you absolutely love it. And uh, this is a book that I uh, really feel so deeply in my heart. Right now, I have the tentative cover, but you know, if you're on my uh, newsletter or follow me on uh, social media, you know there will be the official cover coming out in the weeks ahead. And even though right now you get flat $5 shipping, if you order by the end of Sunday, which is like today, <laughs> it is uh, still gonna be the case that this book will be available for pre-advanced uh, sales uh, over the course of uh, the month of March. So I look forward to meeting you in class and thank you. Thank you for your trust and your love always. I do have other books as well, The Body and the Cosmos. You may remember The Body and the Cosmos came out back in December, uh, debuted as a number one new release in New Age astrology books. So thank you so much for that. My heart is full, I'm so grateful. Prayers to the Sky. Prayers to the Sky is coming out really soon, March 15. If you pre-order on Amazon and forward me the receipt, because I don't know who's ordering on Amazon, they don't tell me the names, but if you forward us the receipt at info at nadiashaw.com, then you will be able to join the study group. That is a $60 value. We are having classes uh, once a month at the new moon, going through each of the planets over the course of uh, 2020, the planets that I discuss in this book. And um, this too is very near and dear to my heart. It's kind of like astrological magic light. It doesn't go into a specific tradition or anything. It just shows you how I understand working with the planets. Uh, we have 
uh, Orphic hymns, Homeric hymns, prayers written by me. We have some insights into astrological timing and ritual, and of course, going through each one of the planets and looking at their creation story to understand the nature of the planet and connecting to it. So it's been getting wonderful feedback. People are loving it. Thank you so much. Again, my heart is full for all the love that this book has been getting so far by people who ordered the advanced copies. And you can pre-order the ebook for now on Amazon. And if you do, you get a $60 value, access to the study group and the downloads afterwards. And it is going to be available for sale March 15 as a hard copy book and as an ebook as well. And thank you, I hope you love it. Live events, I've got a lot of live events coming up this spring, really looking forward to meeting friends and fans in real life, in real time, right? It'll be so much fun. Uh, first, the last weekend of March, I will be in Istanbul as part of Astrology Days with uh, some truly brilliant astrologers from around the world, many of whom I know and love. And so you can click on the link below, learn about that if you are in Turkey. Istanbul is one of my very favorite cities and I'm looking forward to being back. Then I go to one of my other favorite cities, which is Bangkok, Thailand. I will be teaching there over the course of a whole weekend uh, on holistic healing and transformation in the astrology chart. That's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of learning as well. That is in Bangkok, Thailand. Really a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, a city that I connect with very deeply, very spiritually as well. I'm looking forward to being there. And then it is going to be in May that I am going to kick up again with all kinds of activity. In early May, I will be in or at astrologyrisingcostarica.com. That's astrologyrisingcostarica.com. Uh, really a world-class event with world-class astrologers. We're gonna have a whole resort to ourselves. Uh, and this is an event hosted by Kaipacha and featuring uh, some of, again, our living legends in the astrology field alive today are going to be there, including Kaipacha himself, Rick Levine, uh, Maurice Fernandez, Sol Yonason, who I interviewed recently on my channel. Uh, we are going to have Christina Claudel, Timothy Holleran, uh, Julia Simas, and Ari Wolf. So a stellar, stellar group of people, astrologers to learn from as part of a truly immersive event with like-minded people in Costa Rica, no less. It'll be my first time in Costa Rica. Then I will be in Toronto. I'll be in my hometown on the 16th. I believe it is the Saturday, the 16th of uh, May teaching with Astrology Toronto in and on past lives in the astrology chart. The following weekend, Memorial Day weekend, I will be in Seattle as part of the NORWAC conference. And then I will go straight to Las Vegas with the NCGR Stargazers group. I will be teaching the last Tuesday and the last Saturday of May. And then I come home for the summer and I'll be teaching online. There'll be a summer school for Synchronicity University. You know that I'll be doing a lot of teaching online uh, and I'm looking forward to just hanging out with Biggie for the summer. And I'm looking forward to meeting you guys online or in real time, meeting you at the Equinox event coming up very, very soon uh, in three weeks time from the start of this month. So everything that I've talked about, links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for your love, for your trust. Thank you for being here so that I can share how much astrology means to me. I truly do see astrology as a vehicle to affirm love and wisdom in the world. That is my mission. And astrology to me reminds me of love and wisdom, constantly brings me back to that perspective. That is the healthy detachment of astrology as an Aquarian uh, practice. That healthy detachment to choose to see things with love and wisdom when the impulse is to go in a different direction, that is part of one of many great blessings that astrology has brought into my life. And you seeing me as some part of your sacred journey are a part of that. And for that, you have my absolute heartfelt thanks. Thank you. And thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.